Hi, I'm Jamie Young, the National Editor-in-Chief of Backstage, and welcome to Shortcuts, our online series in which we ask industry experts their advice for actors. We recently visited the LA office of Secret Handshake Entertainment to talk to owner and editor Joe Gressis and editor Wayne Raleigh about what makes a strong demo reel and common mistakes that actors make when putting together a reel. Hi there, I'm Joe Gressis. I'm the owner and one of the editors at Secret Handshake Entertainment. I think what makes a great demo reel is something that captures the, the unique quality that you have to offer and shows how it is castable. And it shows it in a, uh, in a concise and exciting manner. The most important thing is that it shows off your type, you know, who you are. People have to watch the first 30 seconds and go, oh, okay, I get it. Oh, now what else can he do? <laughs> wow. Uh, thanks for picking me up. <laughs> I'm not going to sleep with you. What? Your reel needs to be focused, and it needs to be focused on you. Demo reels are not about the story of the scene that we're involved in. The thing you have to remember is that this is your reel, and it needs to be focused on you. And other people in the scene have their own reels, and they can come in and cut their own reels. Right now, we're cutting your reel. There are some standards. I would say keep your reel between, generally speaking, two and five minutes. There are exceptions, depending on how how far your career has developed. If you're a beginning actor, stay on the short side. There's generally, I think, three targets for, for your reels, and that is casting, casting agents, um, agents and managers when you're looking for representation, and then producers and directors. The shortest reels are going to be for casting because they want to get through stuff quickly. They'll make their decision 30 seconds to a minute. It's going to be just based on how you look, a couple of, a couple of lines, scenes. Certainly, two to five is more than ample for that. For agents and managers, tend to be a little bit longer because they are looking to see more or less what they're investing in or what they're potentially investing in. So if, again, they might only be paying attention for 30 seconds to a minute, but then they're going to want to see a little bit more because they want to know how they feel that like they can actually you know, create a brand out of you, how they can market you as, a, as an actor. And then the longest reels tend to be for your producers and directors, and this is only for people who are generally established. I've got some people, I've edited reels for like, you know, Tracy Ullman, for example, has got like a very long reel, but that's because people are very aware of who she is. It's not, uh, it's, she doesn't have to go to casting. We've done them for people like a, Ron Livingston or something like that. It's like they're, they're on the longer side because people know who they are and uh, it's, it's just a matter of getting like a better picture of them in some cases. You have a minute, two minutes, if you're lucky, three or five minutes to really get across who you are and what you can do. So there has to be a clear representation of who you are and there has to be a clear representation of relationships that you're making a connection with the other person in the scene. It's always advisable to put your best stuff first, sure. And uh, your worst stuff, sometimes you shouldn't be on it at all. When you're talking about uh, what order to put your scenes in, like what stuff to put up front, um, you always want to put your best work up front, but it's always a good idea, too, to put uh, high-profile stuff up front. If you were in a scene with George Clooney, that should be on the front of your reel. That's also telling part of your story. I was in this scene with this with this famous person, with this well-known actor, I have done this body of work and, and, and that sort of thing.